Congressman Steve Israel of New York, who is retiring after 16 years in the House. You're leaving, but things are I just am. getting started. I'm, I, I <laughs> Don't you I'm, feel I'm, like the world is spinning out of control? The, the, the world no longer rotates, it just careens. Oh. Uh, so it sounds like I, I got out when the getting was good. Yeah. Um, I thought I was here to apply for a job as an unpaid intern on Morning well, Joe. Which you, you know I what? I'm going to take your resume and we <laughs> Please will, do. we'll put it under consideration. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but probably not. Uh, no. Uh, so what do you think, though, about someone entirely new? When you look at what has happened and you look at the landscape, is that so far out of out of context of where we need to be? Mika, two things. Number one, you know, we are in this debate as Democrats as to whether we need somebody who can appeal to populism, yeah. somebody who can appeal to the middle class, somebody who can do a good ground game. Guess what? We need all of those things. Who They're not mutually right exclusive. Now? So we've got a bunch of folks uh, who are running for DNC chair. Tom yeah. Perez just announced, yeah. Secretary of Labor, a big yeah. fan of his. I worked with Keith Ellison when I chaired the yeah. DCCC. We, we have got to have a leader who can uh, continue our diversity, expand our diversity, but also tap into those anxieties of middle class voters. That's where I think we fell short. We can make it up. Second yeah. thing is this. Uh, we have to stop writing our own obituary. We need, to, I know. we need to exploit opportunity. And here's what I mean. Do you remember in 2008, we elected a Democratic president. Democrats reached a high water mark in the House of Representatives in our majority, had the Senate. We misread a, some would argue, uh, a margin as a mandate. We doubled down on stuff. A year later, we start losing Democratic local officials. A year after that, we lose 63 seats in the House. Two years after that, we lose the Senate, lose control of redistricting. This is going to happen to the Republicans. If they misread a margin for a mandate and start doubling down, repealing yeah. the Affordable Care Act, uh, start uh, tinkering uh, with different policies, tinkering with Medicare, we're going to have a good 2018. Yeah. We have a wind at our back. I think Kirsten Gillibrand, I mean, especially being tapped into the issues that um, are afflicting upstate New York, which is reflective of the rest of the country, trying to bring tech in. Uh, there's someone right there who's in place who could be a breakout Possibly, star but we've got to focus she... on those local elections before we start figuring right. out who our nominee for president so, is going to be. We have so to win what, uh, so gubernatorial what races. Happens? What? So everybody's focusing on Hillary Clinton losing. Yeah. But you, as you know, the bigger challenge to the Democratic Party is getting those 900 state legislative seats That's back, right. getting those yeah. 62 House seats that you've lost, which people can blame on gerrymandering, but you can't blame the 900 legislative seats or the 12 Senate seats that have been lost or all the governorships that have been lost. It's got to start at the ground floor. I know you agree with agree. that. Totally how agree. do you do that? What did Democrats do? And more importantly, look at those numbers. How did Democrats lose their way with so many voters? Well, first uh, thing that happened is we, we did not sufficiently tap into those unique, unprecedented middle class anxieties. There is a trauma occurring, an economic trauma with middle class voters. We need to tap into those voters, and I think we will. Uh, second thing, it goes back to what you said. In 2008, 2010, we made a decision to plus up uh, our numbers in the Congress. So we reached that high watermark in the House and the Senate. Meanwhile, we started losing local elections. We started losing state legislators. We lost 1,000 and Democratic elected officials between 2008 and 2010, mm -hmm. and they took control of redistricting maps Can until 2020. A thousand. It's just, it was catastrophic. Yeah. So we've got to go back to the basics, Joe. And what are the basics? Figure out how did governor, uh, the governor of Montana, a Democrat, win Montana when Donald Trump was winning Montana? How did big? Barack Obama win Indiana in 2008? Those right? are the fundamentals. Go back to those fundamentals. The thing that pains me the most are voters who, who supported Barack Obama 2008, 2012, and voted to Donald Trump. We need to get him back. Hmm. Yeah. Congressman Steve Israel, thank you very much. Yeah. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.